I think the greatest achievement of the organization has been the fact that it's established a level of credibility, which is uh, quite uh, remarkable. Uh, the fact that it's been able to mobilize the best scientific talent from all over the world. Uh, the, also the fact that it's been able to create capacity in countries where there was very little being done by way of research on climate change. And therefore, I think there's been a spread of capabilities and capacity across the world, essentially because of the work of the IPCC. And most importantly, the extent of awareness that's been created on the subject of climate change, the science of climate change, and the truth behind it. I think the greatest achievement of IPCC has been to show that fundamentally uh, science is, is, is not negotiable, the truth is not negotiable, and it can actually at the same time help negotiators to discuss what to do about that information. So I, I'm, I'm very uh, pleased with the way that the interface between scientists and policymakers has led to a greatly improved understanding uh, among the, the, the policy people of what we really can say about what we know and also what we don't know about the climate system. Yes, well, I think the, the great achievement of the IPCC is that we've actually been able to carry out careful scientific um, assessment of, uh, of, of a wide range of the science that's involved and come to some conclusions with, um, with a fair amount of certainty in their, in their simple form. Um, Although there's a great deal we don't know, there's a lot of uncertainty about exactly how big the changes will be and exactly where they will be and all that sort of thing. We've been able to come to conclusions um, which make it clear, I think, that we really have to take action and we really have to be careful for the future. And we've, be, we've had a window into the future which we must not ignore. I think the IPCC is a unique experiment. It's a very unusual deal between the world's governments and the scientific community. In essence, the world's government said, you scientists, if you will follow our rules, we will consider your assessments to be the definitive statement about what's known and what's not known about climate change. The unique feature of this is that no place else in the whole uh, universe of human knowledge has there ever been a process to provide the careful assessment of what's known and what's not known that's a really critical component of bringing science to fruition. IPC also help developing countries and especially uh, these developing countries in having this scholarship program although it is very small but it helps uh, these developing countries the, their young scientists to have more courses so as to be the future, uh, future uh, IPCC lead authors. I think the, the, the greatest achievement uh, was uh, the, uh, an opportunity to uh, contribute to the, uh, the, the real policy uh, development. Uh, for instance, the first assessment report uh, was a scientific uh, background, scientific base, uh, to the formulation of uh, UN uh, FCCC. And the second assessment report gave a scientific, uh, scientific basis for formulation of uh, establishment of Kyoto Protocol. And uh, the third and fourth assessment uh, were instrumental in uh, devising the uh, Bali Action Plan. I think the, uh, those uh, uh, assessment reports are quite outstanding in uh, moving uh, the climate change policy the agenda into, much more, into a much more firmer uh, ground. Well, I think the facts that uh, over the years, several thousand of scientists, world-class scientists, contribute jointly and without being paid by the IPCC to IPCC reports with the only shared objective to provide the best scientific, technical and socio-economic information for decision makers. This, in my view, is absolutely unprecedented and is the real asset for the IPCC. 
With regard to the future of the IPCC, I could see uh, the IPCC as an organization that is reinforcing its role in assessing uh, all the different dimensions of climate change according to the dynamic of the new time. And this is also one of the main challenges of this institution, how to provide this uh, uh, kind of result solid resource uh, in, the se in the sense of uh, the science, in terms of science, but also relevant for uh, the policy making process. I see that more and more people are engaging and understanding the really critical role that IPCC plays in not only in the negotiations, but in your everyday life. So maybe if you look back at the initial stages of the IPCC, when science was not mature in many aspects, and you see that evolving, and you see that science confirming many of the things that uh, IPCC had projected in the past with uncertainty, coming to life, coming to be something verified, at least from the observations that we have so far leads us to think that in the future uh, IPCC will continue to maintain its credi credibility based on the many scientific works that are becoming more and more uh, accessible to people. Uh, un des aspects les plus importants uh, de l'impact du GIEC uh, c'est qu'il y a une prise de conscience collective et surtout du politique de la dangerosité du phénomène du changement climatique. Et ça ne fait l'ombre d'aucun doute si, il y a quelques années, on se disait que les impacts étaient quelque peu euh, discernables. Actuellement, on a la certitude que le climat change, que le climat a changé et que le climat y va changer. Et ceci nous interpelle pour nous euh, appuyer davantage sur les solutions à apporter à ce problème global et qui concerne tout le monde. Uh, I think I don't see any change in the uh, method of work of the IPCC from what have been on for the last 25 years. I, I imagine for the next 25 years it will remain the IPCC with its three working groups. If we give the world the, the latest about science, in working group one, the latest about impacts in working group two, and the latest about government responses to the problem of climate change. Then we synthesize all this. I think there is no change or no need for a change in the uh, goals or uh, methods of the IPCC. It's important that the assessment reports go in step with the progress that we make in the scientific community. One of the large progresses, for example, is the fact that we now have a global view of the changes that the increase in greenhouse gases impacts on the climate system and its different components. For example, we have a much better knowledge on how much ice is melting in Greenland and in Antarctica. And this knowledge, including the uncertainties, will be brought to the public in the fifth assessment report. Likewise, much better computer models are available to inform policymakers about the choices they have and the consequences of, for example, emission pathways in the future and what that means for temperature, what it means for precipitation, and what it means, for example, for sea level rise. Well, my hope is that the next um, report of the IPCC, the fifth assessment report of the IPCC, will help humanity to understand how precious our planet is and the climate of that planet is, so that we can protect it, that we can better adapt to climate change, and take the decisions that need to be taken to protect that unique planet. Yeah, you have to see this uh, next uh, AR5 in the context of the uh, negotiations of the Climate Convention. Uh, climate Convention agreed on the second uh, commitment period, but at the same time they agreed to start the 
review of the old climate regimes from uh, 2013, which is this year actually. Uh, from 2013 October, there will be a series of uh, assessment reports coming out, and that those reports will be hopefully read and analyzed, used in the review of the climate uh, regime for the future beyond 2020. So that's, this is, is a quite a good timing, a little bit late, but they are still in time for the 2013 review. Uh, 2013 review is supposed to finish in the 2015, and in, in between, of course, all the, all the IPCC report will come out. El, el quinto informe llega en un momento muy particular de la negociación o del, o del, del conocimiento del clima que tiene la sociedad y de la negociación que existe. De, seguramente va a tener un impacto muy importante eh, alrededor de, de, la, de la convención que se organiza en el año 2015. Bueno, 2015 es una fecha muy importante para las negociaciones porque se supone que allí van a ser definidas las metas del 2020. The best thing about working with the IPCC is the chance to interact with scientists from all over the world to get an understanding of the way they think about issues, of the things that matter to them, and the kind of people they are. You know, I'm a scientist, and um, seeing how working in IPCC, I can put the science I know at the service of the international community is really extraordinarily rewarding because it, it shows that what we are doing as scientists can be useful. The most, the, uh, it was very rewarding in many ways because we were having a wonderful scientific time. That, that's why people put work into the IPCC. Scientists love belonging to it because they learnt so much. We all learnt so much from each other. And um, this whole process of learning and understanding was, I suppose, the rewarding, the really rewarding part of it from the personal point of view but realising that we were able to make some sense of what was actually going on in the climate and um, not, sense, not, sense, not complete sense of course because we didn't understand all about it at all. More questions were asked and through some questions just ask more and that's the nature of science to go on all the time to be involved in a process on this scale and of this depth and with this importance was really marvellous. 我可以荣幸在过去二十五年当中啊，大部分时间你参与了IPCC的工作。从一名这个主要作者到第一工作组联合主席，以及呢作为IPCC的Bureau the most rewarding thing is that the reports, whether by the working groups, the three working groups, or the synthesis report of the IPCC itself, is the major the main reference material on climate change for the whole world now. I believe IPCC that is a whole model for the way science has to link its activity with politics. We need this transformation. We have to involve the administration and politics from the very beginning of the discussion if we at the end of the day want to come to concrete action. Concrete action, let's not say in these days. So I sincerely hope that to have to celebrate this anniversary of IPCC gives us a new push for the success of climate change policies. Another reason for the IPCC's impressive success is the remarkable worldwide network of scientists and experts who volunteer their time and expertise. The demands placed on the IPCC officers, authors, reviewers are enormous 
But during the course of five major assessments and numerous other issue-specific reports, the IPCC community has time after time risen to the challenge. Recognizing the unique achievement of this community, the Nobel Committee awarded the Peace Prize to the collectivity of IPCC in 2007. I too am pleased to acknowledge the work of the thousands of leading experts from around the world who have contributed to the IPCC assessments over the past 25 years. In celebrating the 25th anniversary, I think we can be immensely proud of what we have been able to achieve through the establishment of the IPCC. The world today is seized by the topic of climate change, despite some of the media cynicism, some of the setbacks in negotiations. It is a fact that the world is alerted to the phenomenon of global warming, that it is beginning to understand that we must transform our economies in the 21st century in order to, first of all, arrest further global warming and secondly, prepare the world for dealing with what has now become inevitable in the sense of a future in which global warming is part of the way we must think about how we manage economies, infrastructure, agriculture, food security and our health systems. But above all, the IPCC must remain if you want a touchstone amongst very diverse views, interests and sometimes also competing interests and objectives in trying to address this challenge in the planetary context. No nation on its own can succeed in reversing climate change today. That must and will remain, I think, the reason why nations across the planet will continue to support the IPCC, its mandate and also its mission.